Hello and welcome to another camera review. Today we are looking at a new announcement from Godox and they have their MS300. Now you might be asking, what is the MS300? Well, that is their very affordable studio light. That is the strobe that is going to give you the ability to set up your studio right at home or in your small space and get incredible professional results just by using a light that costs only $109. Now, $109, you might be saying, what kind of a quality am I going to get? Well, first of all, it is of high quality because it's using the same technology as is, is in other Godox systems, which is a very accurate uh, temperature, which is the 5600, and that is going to remain pretty much consistent throughout the power range. Now, it goes down to 130, 132nd of a power, so that means you're going to have very low power. You can just tune it up just slowly to get up to, uh, to the full power range. And those increments are very easily fine-tuned because you have 10 uh, spatials for each light uh, stop. So that means is that you can fine-tune the amount of light you're going to use in your flashes to get the results you're looking for. Also... When you look at this, it has a very, very nice light structure. It only weighs about 5 pounds. So if you look at it, it's 2.7 kilograms. So you can pretty much put these in your backpack and take it on location. And then if you have power outlets there, you can use this as strobes. And that makes it very easy because it can pack it and you can travel with it. The lights, the lamps are all very cheap to, to replace. And it has modeling lights, which is 150 watts. So that means you're going to be able to uh, know how your light is going to shape that subject that you're for photographing. And that is also dimmable, so you can pretty much see how it's going to affect it. Also, on the back, there is the LCD screen to monitor everything you're doing. And more beautiful about all this is that it's compatible with all the Godox flash units that are going to be the triggers. So you're going to have 2.4 gigahertz compatibility throughout the system. So you can have, for example, a set of uh, flashes that is on channel A, channel B, channel C. And then you're going to be able to cycle and adjust all those through your trigger. And that is beautiful because that it means that you're going to have full control like every professional that has high-end gear. You're only going to have it in a smaller, more compact way that is going to give you everything that you ever needed to do in photography up to the point where you're going to need a very, very high output. This one is 300 watts. Now, there is a cheaper version which sells about $95, which is the MS200. It has only about 200 watt output, but for that little price of about $10, I'll go with the more expensive version because it's going to give you that 100 extra watts. And that means you're going to be able to do all kinds of creative work with your photography. You can pretty much freeze action. You can go in all kinds of directions. Now, you might be asking, what is it that is in this flash unit that is not going to be in the higher, more expensive units? You're not going to have some of the bells and whistles like TTL and other things, which I think in overall is not something that anybody would really need unless they were doing, uh, you know, things like, you know, they need to match everything in their camera to get uh, action and stuff. But I always use my cameras with uh, manual metering and manual flashes. Manual settings is the way to go. If you watched any of the tutorials or anything else, you're going to see that the manual way is the best way to monitor what is going to happen because if you put things on TTL as soon as something changes then you're going to have everything else change and it's makes it very difficult to pinpoint what you need to do it's just a lazy way of trying to light something and you need to be able to adjust the lights in certain way that you're going to be able to create the image that you want so from a creative point of view from a point of improving your photography having manual way of setting those lights in the ratios is the best way to learn and to improve your photography and that's pretty much the only way you're going to really get uh, this full understanding of using strobe lighting for your photography work personally in all my work i have always used manual and that is because it gives me the ability to have absolute control on everything that i'm doing 
So it has a very fast recycle time from 0 0.1 seconds to 1.8 seconds. So that is very, very reasonable for a flash that is going to put out this much light. Now, on the other side, if you are, for example, taking your equipment to Europe, to anywhere else, and you're not using the 120 or 110 watts, and you're going to go into an area where it has 240, this unit will work just fine because it has these dual voltage capabilities that's going to allow it to be used in all kinds of areas in the world that have different type of voltages. So that is a very big plus. Also, when you look at the specs, you're going to also see that it has a uh, flash duration of one two thousandth of a second to one eight hundredth of a second. So that means that it has got enough power to pretty much uh, freeze action or freeze uh, things that are fast moving. And for me, that is also very important because it's going to give me the ability to uh, control the environment in which I'm photographing. So, for example, if an athlete is jumping and taking a hoot shot, I set it, and if, for example, my camera has leaf shutter, it's going to give me a great advantage uh, in terms of photographing. Personally, I like to use all kinds of lights in different scenarios. Sometimes I like to take equipment to locations where the light can be damaged or could have problems. This unit is pretty much uh, the kind of unit that I would take and not be too worried about whether this unit is going to be damaged or not because it's only $110 or less than that if you wanted to replace it. And more importantly, you can set up your home studio on a budget. You can get three lights, $300, boom, you're done. you got a whole bunch of modifiers that are very, very cheap to put it. This has Bowen's mount. What that means is that you can use all kinds of equipment that are available from all third parties that you can mount it on this. If you have very expensive lighting equipment, like light modifiers from Profoto to, to Bron Color or anything else, you can put these speed rings uh, that are compatible and use it on a bounce mount, which is going to go on this. What you're going to find is that it has done certain things very well. For example, the clamp on the end when you're putting it onto the uh, onto the tripod or into a stand, what you're going to find is that it has a click uh, sound, which is that it has a very solid foundation to ensure that the, it can handle the, if you're going to put a light uh, modifier that's heavy in front of it. So in all those things, there is a lot of thought that has gone into it. For me, when I use a light modifier, I need to ensure that it is well positioned. I know companies that are very, very high-end companies that didn't put a right clamp on it and it weighs the equipment down. It makes it dangerous. It could uh, flip over, uh, especially if there is wind and all kinds of things. This ensures that you are going to be pretty solid with the amount of stuff that you have it. And for me, the way I approach photography is how many lights am I going to use, how much I can carry with me, and how fast can I unpack it? Because time equals money. And when you're going out there and you're trying to photograph, if you have six lights and you need to put the poles in and trying to get all the things uh, up and running, and you're spending two hours while the talent is waiting or the client is waiting, it does not look professional. But if you go into set, you have bones mount, you have one of these open up uh, umbrellas, or if you have one of those open up uh, uh, sock boxes that are already pre-assembled, uh, and you can put it onto the light stand in a matter of minutes, boom, you're ready, and you don't have to worry too much about the setup. All you have to now worry about is how good your shots are going to look with the lights that you have. Now, consider this. You have three lights, well, all 300, that's 900 watts. You're going to be able to, be, to light up just about anything, and you're going to get pretty good shots because, you know, those light modifiers, whichever the ones that you're going to choose, can create all kinds of looks. You can get a soft look, you can get a hard look, you can get a, a one that is going to have spot on it. So all these tools that are available gives us all these options. And for me, that's what I look for when I'm going on set. And if my setup time is less, that means I'm gonna need to bring less people onto the set. And that means cost savings for me. It means me faster work time and it means I can get the results in a much efficient way. 
For that, I think an investment of three, four hundred dollars is a good way to start. Uh, Godox has other equipment that, if you wanted to upgrade to higher, more more powerful units, you can do it, and it will work in conjunction with the equipment that you already own or equipment that this one will have. For that, I think it is marrying into a system that is going to give you all kinds of options. And I know that there are other companies out there that produce more expensive stuff or things that are uh, copycats of this. But I think in overall, if you look at the quality of equipment that these guys are putting up, I think it's very, very solid. Uh, you look at their Godox V1s, those are incredibly high quality. You're going to look at their flash units. They are incredibly affordable. And everything else, they paired it down to a way that everybody, whoever wants to do photography, can get into it for a very reasonable price. I remember the times where you couldn't even touch a strobe for under $1,500, $1,600. Now you can get it for $109, and that's incredible. So what I suggest to you, if you're starting out photography, Go out, I provide the links down below for the best price to buy it at. And you can also look at the specs and reviews. There are fantastic reviews on it. It's in the description section below. Go there, click on the link, go look at the product. Even if you just wanted to see what the other reviews are saying, just check it out. And once you decide on it, you're going to be very happy because even if you start with one light, there's so much you can do with one light that uh, it will take you maybe a year or two before you want it to have more lights. If you start with three lights, the possibilities are almost endless and you can create professional quality work that would only rival the limits of your creativity. And I think that is where we all want to be. We want to test our limits of creativity and artistic expression when we're creating images. And you need to have tools. And these are the tools that I think are very, very affordable for anyone who wants to take their uh, photography into the next level. So I hope this has been an informative review and I hope to see you in our next review. Thank you for watching.